Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Every time I get up on here, the first thing I'm going to say is give him praise, give him glory. Because if it had not been for the Lord, where would you really be? Oh, come on, somebody. Don't play with me today. Where would you really be if it had not been for the Lord? You are not so great. We're not so great. Come on, somebody. If it had not been for the glory, if it had not been for the mercy, if it had not been for the grace where would you really be today come on somebody hallelujah always give him glory because guess what you are the reason he, he's the reason that you even have a story come on somebody hallelujah so let me slow myself down because i get excited i get excited because god is good he is good better than we are to ourselves come on somebody hallelujah if it had not been for the love the grace and the mercy come on somebody we are to praise him 24 7 every day all day come on somebody you you'll go to that game you'll watch that in an nfl game you'll watch the um stars you'll watch hollywood this you'll watch this you'll watch greenleaf you'll watch youtube you'll watch everything but do you really give him praise oh come on somebody i'm on one i feel the power of the holy ghost this is day three of the 14 day liquid fast so you know i ain't got nothing but spirit for you come on somebody hallelujah because when you starve the flesh the spirit is strong hallelujah yeah your flesh be wanting everything come on somebody god is teaching us something i say god is teaching us something praise worship how we worshiping is how we live. Come on, somebody. This ain't no Sunday thing. This ain't no Wednesday thing. This ain't no Bible study thing. This ain't no getting on Facebook thing. This an everyday thing. I love him just because. It's not to show off in front of you. I love him because he saved me. I love him because he should have let me die in my mess, but he had mercy and grace. I love him just because he died on the cross when I was lost. Oh, come on, somebody. What about you? Give him glory, give him praise. If we learn, I don't know why God got me going here. I, I, I gotta, I gotta, don't worry. Y'all know I got, I got something to talk about. A little Bible study, the spirit of offense, unforgiveness. Cause God said they're still from you, but I gotta give him glory. God said, if we learn how to worship him, y'all ain't ready for me. If we go back to worship him, let me tell you what, we, we in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah to the 10th power. Where everybody, y'all, y'all know what's going on. Ain't nobody have to tell y'all all the killing, all the murder, all the mayhem. You know what that's behind? That poor little girl. Let me tell you what that was behind. Y'all know that's behind organ stealing or sex trafficking money. Y'all don't understand what's happening. The world got y'all just, and when I say y'all, I'm talking about in general. I'm not talking about somebody particularly on here. But here's the deal. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm about to go here today. Whatever you feed on, that's, become, that's what you become. You feed on money, you'll do anything for it. Come on, somebody. You feed on porn, you'll look at it all day, all night. Want sex all day, all night. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You stay on Facebook, you're going to be about some drama all the time. Every time we look, you're going to have some drama coming. And going. And around and around and around. So whatever you feed on, that's what you become. Oh, I just said something right there. So let me get on into it. God said, if we learn how to worship him again, if we learn how to worship him again, if we learn how to worship him in spirit and in truth. So let me go ahead and slow this thing down. So as I, um, I was talking to an apostle this morning, a very powerful woman of God, and we were talking and she was all in my message today because God told me, he said, Deanna, it's the spirit of offense and unforgiveness that will steal like never before. Remember the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. I'm going to be real with you. Some of y'all so ugly. Oh, I'm going here. You're not going to like me today. I'm going to tell you right now. Some of y'all so ugly hearted. I mean, you love God, but a cuss out your sister and your brother, your mother and your father. Come on, somebody and your kids. But you love God. I'm talking about you speaking tongues to, to God and, and a cursed men. Y'all ain't ready for me. It's stealing from you. It's stealing from you. It's stealing your peace, God says. It's stealing your joy. Some of you have lost opportunities. Lost, some of you have lost friendships. Some of you have lost things because you could not control your temper. That offense. Get a, get offended. Get offended. I'm going to walk this thing out. Let me slow it back down. I got to walk this thing out. So let me go ahead to the first scripture. The first scripture is 1 Corinthians verse 11. So uh, I'm sorry, chapter 13 verse 11. 
1 Corinthians 13 and 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, y'all do know when he says man in the Bible, he's talking about you man, woman. That's it right there. When you catch someone becoming easily offended, that's because you have not matured. I don't care how old you are. I've met 80-year-olds that just pop off at the mouth. I've met two-year-olds, believe it or not. Yes, that's because you're not mature in the spirit of God. Let me tell you something, and I got to go here. I'm going here today. I'm going to tell you all right now. You can always tell where a person is in their walk with God by the way they operate, what they say, what they talk about. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you something that's very, very prevalent. If you are not surrendered to the Holy Ghost all the way, you are capable of anything. And I don't trust you. I'm going to say that again. If you know anybody that's not fully surrendered by the Holy Ghost, they're capable of anything and you cannot trust them. I'm going to walk this thing through. Don't worry about it. Because when you are under the Holy Ghost, the unction of the Holy Ghost, then the spirit of conviction comes on you. And when the spirit of conviction comes on, it'll tell you, don't say that, don't do that, don't go there, apologize, stop backing crazy, calm down, oh, you're going too far. Is this kind of like touching anybody? Oh, come on, somebody. Don't worry, I'm going to walk this thing through. I got to walk it through, y'all. So let me go ahead and get all this out the way that God told me to show y'all. Hold on a minute. Oh, no, I got to navigate offense. It's a breach of a law or rule and a legal act. Neither offense violates any federal law. Let's keep on going. Annoyance or resentment brought by a perceived, notice what I said, a perceived insult. Can I tell you something? Sometimes it's not even what we think. How many times have you been wrong? You just ain't told nobody but God. You was like, you know what, God, I repent. But you, but you, what you should have did is went to that person or just told them, look, you know what, I thought something, I apologize. Two, our disregard for oneself or one standard or principles. I didn't intend to give offense. Hold on. I'm going to walk this thing out, you guys. I got to walk it out. Y'all know. Hold on. Okay. So, uh, unforgiving. Unforgiveness. God says this is another one. Man, I know y'all are hold on. You got to let things go. And then you say this, well, I'm going to forgive, but I'm not going to forget. You have no authority to do that because God says in his word that he forgives you. He throws it in the sea of forgiveness. So what makes you think that you have to hold that bondage over a person? Come on, somebody, or even yourself. So really, when you forgive, you are freeing you and that person. Come on, somebody. Not always got to also got to say something. There are sometimes you'll try to go to somebody and they don't want to hear it. That's on them. You you have already, you, all you got to do is give it to God. God, I tried to apologize. God, I forgive them. I hope they forgive me and move on. Don't let people put you in bondage or hold you in bondage. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me continue. So definition of unforgiving is number one, unwilling or unable to forgive. Notice it says unwilling. You just don't want to do it. Number two, having or making no allowance for error or weakness and unforgiving environment where false moves can prove fatal. I really want to hear, read that again. Where false moves can prove fatal. How many times have you lost an opportunity because you didn't want to forgive somebody or a marriage or a relationship or a friendship? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk this thing through. Hold on just a minute. Let me walk it through. Let me tell you, in, in the Bible, it was full of stuff like that. Okay, y'all remember King Saul tries to kill David with a spear that was in 1 Samuel 18, 6 to 16. Notice what it says. An evil spirit from God came forcibly on all Saul. King Saul tried to kill David in a fit of anger because of jealousy. By throwing a spear, King Saul was prophesying before he tried to kill David with a spear. You mean to tell me he, he was prophesying and then tried to kill somebody? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, and but the Lord had left Saul. Let me walk this thing through. Saul was afraid of, I already read that, background reading, jealousy, Saul's jealousy of David. When David returned from defeating the Philistines, and this is in Samuel 18, 6, all right? When David returned from defeating the Philistines as they were in, entering the city, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul, singing and dancing as they joyously played tambourines and lutes. As the women sang and played, they said, Saul has struck down thousands, but David his ten thousands. That's what did it right there. People would get jealous of your gift. Now, now 
David loved Saul. Y'all know that, right? Saul was very angry and he did not like what the women sang. Notice what he did. He did not like it. He told himself, they have attributed tens of thousands to David, but to me have attributed thousands. What else have he but the kingdom from the Saul, even on his eye? So right then and there, he started like, okay, so if he getting this, then he's going to have the kingdom soon. I want to start right there. Notice what he said. What else can he have but the kingdom? So right then and there, he knew that God was with David. Oh, I'm, I'm going to walk this thing out. This thing going to be so deep. Y'all might want to tag and share. Let me tell you what has happened to the body of Christ. Jealousy. And let me tell you. Oh, I'm going to walk this thing. That's going to be deep, y'all. Can anyone tell me the first sign of jealousy? I'm going to go ahead and tell you. The first. Let me tell you where the spirit of jealousy was born. In heaven. And I'm going to walk it out with you. And everybody knows this. All you got to do is Google it. So you remember God was with, um, Satan was with God. He was the most beautiful chair. He was the choir director. God said he didn't speak it. He spoke, he thought it. He want to be God. That was the first sign of jealousy. That's when jealousy was born. It is the same thing that's taken out the saints and the leaders and the people of today. The Satan has this world. Let me tell you what he's done. I'm going to work this thing up. Competition. Oh, come on, somebody. Remember. All spirits work together. Only people of God want to be a long ranger, want to be the greatest thing since Wonder Braid. Demons work together. Why can't we? I'm going to tell you why. Because the enemy then came in the world and he started this competition. That's why I stopped looking at Sunday's best, idol, and all that stuff. Let me tell you something that breaks people's spirit. That's You can't find it in the Bible. I challenge every last one of you that's going, that's listening and that's going to listen. Find in the Bible where they did competition. They went to war, but there was never competition. He created that spirit of competition because he know that would bring anger, resentment, and jealousy. And if he can get you to be angry, jealous, and resentment, oh my God, it'll take you to a whole level of offense. Don't you understand? Oh, he played us good, didn't he? Oh, come on, somebody. I'm walking this thing out today. He played us good. So now you got everybody watching everybody. Who's getting the most money? Who's getting the most likes? Who is people following? Y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, y'all. Send up the heart. Send up the hearts. Notice I don't ever say that junk. I don't care if y'all send up a heart or not. I don't care. My position, my mantle, my assignment is to preach and teach and reach. It is not to try to get you to love me. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm walking this thing out today. My assignment is for you to fall in love with God, for me to lead you to the Father. This is the way to go, sister. This is the way to go, brother. I'm not supposed to be acting like I'm great. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to walk this thing out. Because when you start looking at other people, that's when you start getting in sin. Because now you're looking at other people's gifts. You're looking at other people's talents. You're looking at who they're friends with, who they close with, and all this other stuff that really don't matter. Oh, come on, somebody. Because the Bible says that your, your gift will make room for you. Don't you know that when you're anointed and appointed, ain't nobody can stop you? Oh, I should, be, I should be an example for you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I told you how I was with the most powerful people. I'm talking about some brand names. And, and they turned on me because I wasn't going the way they was going. And I'm telling you, I, I know how some of y'all feel because I was like, God, well, how am I going to do what you want me to do? He said, Deanna, all you got to do is keep your eyes on me. I just said something. Y'all got your eyes on somebody else's money. Y'all got your eyes on somebody else's husband. Y'all got your eyes on somebody else's wife. Y'all got some your eyes on somebody else's job. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's how jealousy is birthed. It's birthed through competition. And actually, it's birth because you ain't minding your business. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You see, if you really mind your business, sister and brother, you would have so you'd be so much. You'd be so busy because God will tell you, look, first of all, how can you minister to others? And you got this going on. You got a whole plank in your eye, sister, brother. So get you straight and then maybe you can minister and then hold on. Don't get it twisted. Even though you are ministering to other people, you'll be doing and dealing. What is doing and dealing? You'll be doing ministry and still dealing with some stuff yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We all got issues. We all got stuff we're dealing with. Ain't nobody perfect. Hallelujah. But you'll be doing and dealing. God, I'm ministering, but I'm ministering to me too. God, I'm helping them, but help me too. God, I'm praying for them, but God, pray for me too. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, so, so go back to the spirit of offense. That's how you get an offense because you, you, you're getting off track. 
You are not looking at what God has for you. God has assigned you for a reason. God have assigned you for a season. God have assigned you for a mandate. God have you a calling. You looking at everybody else's. And that's how you get an offense. Oh, I'm going to walk this thing out. This thing about to get heavier. I ain't lying. I feel the power of God up in here. Let me tell y'all something. Even as a leader. Um, sometimes I got to do things I don't want to do. God will tell me, say, Deanna, I need you to back up from a student or I need you to back up from a friend, a so-called friend. And I'm, I'm going here because th this stuff is real. People will get offended. What, am I supposed to come on somebody, obey man or God, God all the way. But let me tell you what happens. So then you get an offense. Oh, they don't love me. Oh, they don't like me. Oh, they love me. Do you understand that God wants to talk to you? That God wants to grow you up. That that you ain't listening to nobody else. So God said, wait a minute, back up, back up, back up, back up. Before y'all both get in trouble. Excuse me, I'm going somewhere. The enemy will try to put you in offense so he can isolate you. And if he isolates you, what he's going to do is he's going to whisper lies in your ear. Now you think everybody against you. You think everybody is doing this, doing that, doing that. Can I tell you something, sister, brother? Sometimes it's you. Sometimes your own mind will take you on a ride. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Sometimes your mind will take you on a ride and you be thinking it's everybody. And truth be told, is you. Sometimes you can be your worst enemy because you're not listening. You're not calming down. You're not praying. You're watching. And, some, and, 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 and let me tell you something. I understand I have very much compassion for people because when you're hurting, you are wanting somebody. Oh my God. But can I tell you something? Sometimes God say, no, no, no. He, he'll make everybody back up. No, they're depending on you too much. They, they, they thinking you the savior. That's why most of y'all believe in man and not God. That's why most of y'all run after these leaders and these prophets and everybody else. Because guess what? Y'all are so dependent on man, which is a curse. Come on, somebody look for it in the bible it says to trust in the arm of flesh is a curse god wants you to trust in him he said he sometimes he'll back people up from you because he wants to grow you oh hallelujah he wants you to get to know him because guess what you'll keep running to people to save you oh i'm going somewhere hallelujah walk with me walk with me when god is the savior and i had to learn that too so many things happened to me in my life. I thought it was very unfair from 12 years old so especially if you're a child you'd be like okay god that wasn't fair it may have not been fair, but hold on. Are you supposed to all your life talk about what they did and how they did it? Where's the healing? Where's the deliverance? Where's the forgiveness? The same thing that God did to you. Because the same grace and mercy that God extends to you every day, you're supposed to extend to others. Who are you? Come on, somebody, hallelujah, that you think you can get mad and do what you want to do and say what you want to do and act like you want to do and ain't nobody supposed to say nothing. The devil is a lie. Look, bully, because that's what you've become now. You're an offensive bully. You might as well just join a team and do some football. Because now you are just hurting yourself and everybody you come in contact with. Because you don't want to sit somewhere and get healed and delivered. Hallelujah. Let me tell you how healing and deliverance work. You have to surrender. God, I don't know what's wrong with me. God, I'm hurting. God, I, 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 look, I, just, I just give up. God will walk with you. God will talk with you. God will show you. God will lead you to people. But then even if he leads you to people, if you're not listening and you're in offense, you didn't messed up again because now the people that he led you to, you didn't just run them away now. Nah. So now you're praying again. Well, God, ain't nobody want to help me. And God's saying, wait a minute. I sent people, but you were so upset, angry. Don't want to listen to nobody. Come on, somebody walk with me up in here. This stuff real. You wondering why you can't get healed and delivered. Calm down. Calm down. I'm going to say it again. Calm down. Hallelujah. Let me talk, tell you something. You got to stop getting offended so angry because things didn't happen the way that you thought it should have. Or who you thought should have helped you. I'm saying something. Because the enemy would try to tell you. Oh they abandon you. They don't love you. They, they don't care. That's not true. That is not true. The enemy is a whisperer. 
He whisper lies. That's why you have to have a connection with God and you have to have a relationship with God and you have to understand that, guess what? Everything is not about you. Sometimes God is doing a work through you. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, but you think it's about you. I just said something, hallelujah, hallelujah, because as long as we live, I don't care how great you think you are. I don't care how many degrees, how many doctors, how many churches. I don't care if you um, pastor a 10,000 member church. Let me tell you something. You'll always be doing and dealing, doing ministry and doing with some stuff. Hallelujah. But how you handle it is the growth. It's the maturity growth. God, keep me. God, I'm getting weak. You got to pray. But guess what? You got to grow up. It's time for the body of Christ to mature. It's too many. And when you was in the world, you was acting like you was bad. Now you want to come to the body of Christ and, oh, they hurt my feelings. They say that. Oh, you, you, you oh, I'm going here. You blocked me. You defriended me. You, 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 grow up. Nobody have to be your friend. Long as you got Jesus. And yeah, I'm saying it like that. Y'all better grow up because now, guess what? You don't know what you didn't just did. You may have lost somebody that could have been your friend. Oh, I'm. let me tell you something. Let me testify. You know how many friends I lost with my ugly attitude 10, 15 years ago? People that I'm crying for today. God, can I see them one more time? My first spiritual parents. And if they ever hear this, I pray they do. Mike and Yvonne Lambert. Oh, you know how long I've been asking y'all? I've been asking. I said, God, bring them back. He has not brought them back yet. I don't know if I messed that up. I'm just being real with y'all because some of y'all need to know this happened in the 80s. They were my first spiritual parents and I hurt them. I, I, I was just ugly, cussing, fussing, didn't know nothing. And them people, will, I will always love them. I'm going to say it again, always. And I wish to God I can hear it and see them again. Y'all ain't ready for me up in here. Y'all sitting up there blowing up, blowing up over something simple where God sent somebody to help you and you're trying to run them away or hurt them or don't know who they are. Oh, there it is right there. You see, you thought you thought you was all that, huh? You thought you was truly anointed. Well, if you had been so anointed, man or woman of God, then you'd have known who that was. You wouldn't act crazy. I'm talking to myself, too. I wouldn't act crazy in the 80s if I'd have known. And I, God was trying to tell me, but I'm sitting up there. I, 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 I don't want to listen to nobody. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to do me. Some of you are missing out on some great opportunities, some great relationships, some great lessons. Because you are holding offense and unforgiveness. And God told me to tell you, count the cost. Because let me tell you something, you may not get a chance to do that again with that person or with that opportunity. It's not worth it, people. Learn to let stuff go. That's how people are killing people. That's how people are murdering people. Unforgiveness, hate, rage, anger. All of them demons roll together. And let me tell you something. You can't do that without God. You can't have forgiveness without God. You have to forgive and forget. Lord, I release them. God, I release them. Because the only time you hold on to something, and I'm going to tell it, I'm going to peel that onion back, is because you think you all that. They shouldn't have did that to me. Who are you? They spit on Christ Jesus. They whipped him. They killed him. They nailed him to the cross. And the Bible said he opened not his mouth. Who are you? Mm-hmm. I'm on one today. Who are you? And, and what I preach to you is for myself as well. We got to come back to the oracles of God. We got to come back to forgiving and loveness and love, loveling. And let me tell you something. Got to learn how to be quiet. I had to learn. I had a big mouth. I, I still do, but it, it's, it's more positive. Thank you, Jesus. But I used to have a, I mean, just ugly. I don't mind saying it. Come on. The Bible say, tell the truth and shame the devil. I used to just be, I don't know, just, just ugly. And some of you, you have that same spirit. And I look at you and I don't judge you as to say, oh, my God, I, I feel sorry for you because I say, Lord, I've been there. And it took me years when it should have took me months. I'm just teaching. I'm just preaching. I'm just reaching, trying to stop y'all from making the same mistakes I did or going through the more stuff. Because, you see, back then, stuff was a little, you know, it's hot out here now. Them demons, them demons ain't playing. The, the little whipping we got. That was whipping now. Don't get it twisted. But these days, it might cost you your life. And I rebuke it, but I'm telling you what God say. Y'all playing too much, man. Y'all better stop playing. It's not time to play. It's not time to, I, I'm offended. Because you don't want to be my friend. We in grade school or what? I better grow up and quit playing. Them demons ain't playing. Them demons ain't playing. And truth be told, we ain't got time to play. Let's just be real. We ain't got time to play. Grow up. Grow up, said the Lord. Grow up, said the Lord. Get out of your feelings and start understanding that this is about God and his kingdom. This is about souls and the kingdom of God. It's not about you. 
We got a whole demon out here. Kevin, let me tell you something. Your sister and your brother is not your enemy. That's a spirit. That's a spirit, said the Lord. Hallelujah. We come against the spirit, not each other. If the body of Christ don't get it together, when martial law comes, we're going to be in trouble. Y'all better stop and count the cost and quit being jealous of each other, quit hating each other, and quit being ugly. And learn to love and pray for each other. And if you don't understand each other, just hold your peace. I'm going to say it again. Hold your peace. I'm going to say it again. Hold your peace. I know that's hard for you. Because some of you, I got to tell a piece of my mind. You ain't got no mind if it's not the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, all right, that's all God told me to say. I got to hit and move. Y'all know how we do it. So y'all just keep on. I know it's the third day. And I'm telling you right now, God got us. It's going to be all right. We're going to make it 14 days. And can I tell you something? When you are fasting like this, your spirit is full. But let me tell you something. The enemy is after you. He's going to be trying to feed you. He's going to be trying to start stuff with you. He's going to be trying to use people against you. You got to stay strong. Hold your peace. Stay in your word. And walk in love. I'm very serious. Walk in love. Walk in forgiveness. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers for that is who we are. God bless.